The first thing we have to figure out is how exactly does email work? We all know that we can log on to Gmail or yahoo.com and we can start filling out an email. It's pretty much second nature to everybody by now. But what actually happens behind the scenes? Well, let's say that we have a sender, Angela at gmail.com, and a recipient, Timmy at yahoo.com. Now, in order to send this email from my Gmail account to another email account, what happens behind the scene is that there's a Gmail mail server, which will receive my message. And then there's a Yahoo mail server, which will store the message until Timmy logs onto his computer and logs on to yahoo.com, which downloads the email from the Yahoo mail server. So this email is going to move between all of these steps. And in order to do this, it relies on something called SMTP, the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. And this contains all of the rules that determine how an email is received by mail servers, passed on to the next mail server, and how email can be sent around the internet. Now, a good analogy for SMTP is if you imagine these mail servers as a post office and Timmy's computer being the mailbox, then SMTP is basically the postman who knows how to handle the email and take it to various post offices and eventually put it into Timmy's computer. So in Python, there's a module called SMTP lib, which allows us to use SMTP to send our email to any address on the internet. To start, I recommend setting up two fresh email accounts. Create a new email account with Gmail and also create a new email account with Yahoo. These new email accounts will be perfect for testing your code and following along with the video tutorials. Plus, we'll be making those email accounts a little bit less secure to test our code. So that's another reason to set up some testing email addresses for now. After you've set up your new email accounts, head over to the course resources and download the zip file with the starting code for today's lessons. And then we're going to open that up using PyCharm. Now, I want you to take a look inside the starting project. There is a main.py file and there's also a quotes.txt file. Don't worry about this file for now. We're going to come back to it when we explore the date time module. For now, we're going to be working within the main.py. And I want to show you how you can use this SMTP lib library to start sending emails straight from your Python code. As always, we import the module SMTP lib and then we can start using it. Once we've imported this SMTP library, essentially, we can use it to create a new SMTP object. So we're going to call that object a new connection because it's basically a way for us to be able to connect to our email providers, SMTP email server. We're going to do this by tapping into the SMTP lib and then creating a object from the SMTP class. Now, when we create this object, one of the things that we should specify is the location of our email providers, SMTP server. Now for Gmail, it's simply smtp.gmail.com, but it's different for every email provider. So that means if your email ends in at gmail.com, then this would be how you would connect to your email server. In our case, I've created a testing email called appbreweryinfo at gmail.com. And this part that's before the at sign is the identity of my email account. And the part after the at sign is the identity of my email provider. So in my case, I need to connect to smtp.gmail.com. But if you have a different email provider, for example, if you're with Hotmail, it's smtp.live.com. And if you're with Yahoo, it's smtp.mail.yahoo.com. And if you're with a completely different email provider, then simply just Google your email provider and the SMTP information. And you should find an article somewhere that describes a URL that looks something like this. Once I've created my connection, the next thing I need to do is to go ahead and call start TLS. Now TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. 
and it's a way of securing our connection to our email server. So that way, when we're sending an email, if somebody else intercepts our email somewhere along the line and they try to read it, because this is enabled, that message will be encrypted and it will be impossible for them to read what is in the content of our email. So this line basically will make this connection secure. Now, once we've secured our connection, the next thing to do is to actually log in. So we'll call connection.login. And here we have to provide a username and a password. So the username is simply the email that we use to log on to our email service. So in my case, it's just my email. And the password, I've just made up a new password, but it's the same password that you would use to log on to your email service as well. So my made up password is ABCD1234 and then two brackets. And once I've logged in to my email provider, the final thing I wanna do is to actually send my mail. Now the from address is my email and the to address is the person who I want to send the email to. So I've set up a new dummy account called appbrewerytesting at yahoo.com and make sure that you haven't got any typos in your email, your password, the SMTP URL or the recipient email address. Now, finally, the last thing we want to add is the message. So this is what we actually want to send in our email. And just like we did with our file, when we opened it at the very end, once we're done with it, we're going to close it off as well. So now we can go ahead and hit run. And you might get a number of errors at this point. Now, it's important that if you do get an error, then you first check to make sure that you haven't got any typos here, 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 or here. But once you've checked that through, then the next thing you can do is you can actually look at this error code and follow the URL. Now, in our case, the reason is because by default, Gmail doesn't just let anybody access your email account. And you have other ways of making your account even more secure. In order to send email from a Gmail account with Python, the first thing you have to do is to lower those security boundaries. So head over to your username and then go to manage your Google account. And then here you're gonna to go to security and you're gonna make sure that this section where it says two-step verification or use your phone to sign in are both turned off. And then the section where it says less secure apps, you have to make sure this actually says on. So we have to turn on the access from our less secure apps, which is of course our Python code. At this point, when you look at your email, you'll get a critical security alert from Google telling you that access for less secure apps has been turned on. And this is why I recommend when you're using Python code to access your email, that you actually set up a new email address instead of using your primary email address. And that's why I've also created a new dummy account in order to actually run this code. Once we've done all of this, then we can go back and hit run again. And you'll see this time, we see the process finish with exit code zero, which means all of the code ran successfully. And now if I take a look at my sent box, you can see that I've got this message that's been sent. And if I take a look at the email address, which the email was sent to, then you can see that in my inbox, there's actually nothing here. But if you take a look inside spam, then there is our brilliant email that came from our Python code. So first thing I'm gonna do is change that to not spam to make sure that it goes into the actual inbox. And the next thing we wanna be able to do is how can we make our email seem less like spam? So an email without a subject headline is prime target for being filtered as spam. So let's go into our email and see how we can add a subject line. It's pretty simple. It goes inside the message 
parameter and all we have to do is just write the word subject colon and then we can put in whatever it is that we want to use as the subject of the email like this. Now, how do you put in the content or the body of the email? Well, you add two new lines using backslash n backslash n, and then you can put the content. So this is the body of my email. And let's just split this up so it's a little bit easier to read. And now I can hit run again. And once that's done, you can see that in my Gmail, in the sent folder, that this message now has a subject line and a body. And it's the same thing when I go to my And when I take a look at this new email that came through, you can see the subject line and the body of the email being separated. Now we can actually avoid having to write this line connection.close if we do the same trick as we did with file opening. We use the with keyword. So we can say that with smtp.smtp .smtp to create the connection. And then we save that as the connection. Then we can indent all of the rest of the code inside this block. And once it's done with sending the email, it will close off that connection automatically. So this is how you could send email using Python and SMTP lib. Now there's quite a few things here that are prone to errors, especially given that we're typing a lot of things in plain text, like our email, our password, and a bunch of things. So if you're getting errors when you're running your code, or if it's not doing what you expect it to, make sure that you've checked against all of these strings and it's actually what you expected it to be. Secondly, make sure that whichever account you're sending from, that you actually go ahead into the account and modify the security settings. For example, let's say I wanted to send from this email address. So I'm gonna put that in here and then in this case, the email server I need to connect to will be Yahoo's email server, which is under the URL that I showed you before, smtp.mail.yahoo.com. And that is actually not enough. So let me just change my recipient. And I hit run. This is the error that you'll see. It says SMTP server disconnected, connection unexpectedly closed. Now this could be down to a number of reasons, for example, a typo in this part, but also if your account doesn't actually allow less secure apps. So on Yahoo, the process is a little bit different. You have to go into your account, go to account info, and then go to account security. And you'll have to log in again and generate a new app password. So we're gonna create a new app and we're gonna give it a custom name, Python code, and then click generate. And now we have a app password to use for our Python code. So now back over here, we change this password to the one that we just copied over. And now if I hit run, that error should go away and we should get process finished with exit code zero. And when I take a look over here in my inbox, I've got my email from appbrewerytesting at yahoo.com. So check your security settings, check your spam, and check that you haven't made any typos. And if none of that works, then just simply try doing everything I did in the video but with a new email account that you set up with Gmail. Then you can use the same SMTP address and the same process that you saw in the video to try this out.